So first of all, I just want to share a few faces that some of you know who are uh, at the team at the moment. So this first is Karis. She's the organizer of the year training. Tertha is the ambassador of Ireland. Um, Alice of Brazil. Christiana of Switzerland. Erika is from the Netherlands. And Lorenzo is from Sweden. They are all part of the Academy and Somatic Consent. So you see them here and there. Um, some people have kind of shifted in different directions. They are not uh, in the team anymore and um, um, so there are faces that you might see here and there. So first of all what is somatic consent not and I want to make sure that this is not a therapy. So if people are looking for therapy um, um, it is probably therapeutical but it's not per se therapy and I'm not a therapist. Even though that what we do can be challenging and it can be very healing and uh, what it's not is as well, you don't learn a technique. Yeah, so it's it's more like uh, a, a practice that will he um, uh, show you the inflow of the uh, somatic nervous system that you can use then um, in your professional and in your personal life. And the more you practice with that, the more you uh, will find that useful in your life with, you know, wherever you are in social environment, friends, family and work and so on. So, um, so many consent is specifically, and that's as well my profession as a body worker and a facilitator for massage therapist who can use that for tantra practitioner, sex worker of any kind, psychotherapist, doctors, counselors, coaches, and educator, and kind of everybody who is holding workshops around consent and have the question of consent or workshops that are related to touch and connection. So this is the first part that I would like to show it is you know this here is your brain the blue part is somewhere in your brain your motor cortex and this blue one here is the line are uh, your impulses from your brain into your hand into your limbs into your uh, arm in your body sending signals and you move your hand yeah? and so when you do that for a moment just like move your hands it is because you're uh, motor cortex is sending sim signals in your hand and you move simple as it is it doesn't get more simple than that so what we what we all know very well is that we when we're moving and when we are in action towards another person um, and this is what most people know that action that we do is for other people to some degree and when people that we touch and we do something for them when they are happy then this activates in ourselves the pleasure center and uh, this is what we call the indirect root of pleasure. So you do something, you get something back that makes you feel good about yourself when somebody else feels good about them. So the saying around that is that, you know, their pleasure is your pleasure. Yeah? Or if you say it for yourself, your pleasure is my pleasure. And this is how most people are wired, that they do something to get other people in a place of happiness that makes them feel better about themselves. So what we're doing in Somatic Consent, we want to put that aside. We want to put that on a pause, on a parking position for a while. We want to get that back later. But for now, we want to just like turn that around. When you move your hand and you go into that spot of direct pleasure, that the nerve endings that you have here in your hands, um, they will activate your pleasure center by doing it. And that's the waking up the hands meditation. And we do that in a little bit. But first, I just wanted to give you a little bit of this uh, context. And this is the direct root of pleasure. So the stimuli and feeling that now the question is when... Um, you touching another person and you feeling kind of touching another person that this is uncomfortable. Yeah. So when you touching for yourself another person and that doesn't feel good, the question is for you, why is it difficult for you to be in action and feel yourself on somebody else? And just for a few moments, 
just like to let that go through yourself, just to feel it. Why is it difficult to touch another person? And you don't need to answer that now or you don't need to put anything in the chat just for yourself. What is it? Is it uncomfortable? You don't have the opportunity. What do they think about you? Uh, they think something is wrong with you. So whatever the reasons are. So I've done that question so many times over the years that the answers are always the same. Yeah? It is related to shame, guilt, fear, beliefs. They don't like me, fear of rejection, memories, expectation, being selfish, conditioning, um, distraction, uh, boredom, falling asleep, type of relating. Uh, again, thinking too much, shame, it's drama, stress, trauma, tension or control. The question now is, when you touch another person, can you stay in connection with your hands, with your inflow? And that is what we're doing when we're starting to activate the sensory inflow of the hands. And that's what I would like to start with you now. So we're waking up the hands. Okay. So, so that you get a little bit of a context. So now the invitation is that you sit comfortable to make it really easy and simple for you. You just lean back somewhere on a chair like I do that here on the... On the, on the couch, on the sofa, because when you lean forward and you have your shoulders engaged in a different way, this inflow is literally um, kind of, in, it's blocked. It's just, it, it doesn't work that easy. So when you sit relaxed and comfortable and your shoulders are relaxed and you put a cushion on your lap, then your shoulders are relaxed, your spine is relaxed and it's much easier to find. When you have found it on one point, then it doesn't matter what you do and how you move. But in the first place, when this is um, embodied, then it becomes really simple and easy. So the invitation is to take something in your hand. I still have here my gadget. Whatever it is, can be a spoon or a piece of wood or a stone. Or And um, the invitation is, we do that for about five six, seven maximum minutes, is that um, you just make connection with that object. So we get some information about the um, what it is and how to use it and what it's all about, how it's made and how it's called. And that's all not important. Important is that you start feeling it and start feeling it I mean what is the temperature of it is it solid or is it is it soft is it smooth or is it rough is it has it sharp corners or is it round corners is it dense or very light and during this entire hands meditation, feel totally free to keep your eyes open or close them in any way you want. So to experiment um, if it's easier to find for you. So when you then slow down your movement by half and slow it down by half again and just move your hand over the object or move the object over your hand, and you play on certain areas that might be your palm or between your fingers or your fingertip, your nail bed, maybe the backside of your hand. You notice that it starts feeling kind of pleasant, kind of tinglish and just kind of nice. And when you find a spot where it feels delicious and we're looking for a kind of kind of tinglish electromagnetic sensation when you find something that just feels good then the invitation is just to stay there and allow yourself to just feel hmm. so let your breath flow as it wants to Nothing to give here, nothing to get. 
no goal, just for the sake of feeling yourself. And the feelings coming up, you welcome them. And if your mind still moves very fast, that's welcome too. Just let it do its job. Just stay in connection with the sensation there in your hands. Because there are so many nerve endings. And they're all there to feel. If your tension is moving away, bring it straight back to the sensation there in your hands. So just let the magic unfold by itself. What happens when you just feel? Whatever the feelings are, whatever is there, that's all within you and that's all good. Nothing to change, nothing to put on top, nothing to perform, just the sensation. Mm. And whatever the feelings are, allow them, just welcome them for a moment. And then slow down your movement till they stop. Stay there for a moment. And then that feeling in your body still reverberate a little bit and if your eyes are still closed open your eyes orient yourself somehow somewhere and 
and bring your attention back to the screen. What did you notice? How did it felt? How was that very simple exercise to be in action for your own felt sensation? How do you feel right now? How, how does it feel like you're just having a f door in front of you that you're knocking? Okay, I can go in action and receive and feel myself as much as I choose and want. How does it feel for you? Okay, so then I would like to go in the next step and show you a little bit more of the mind magic so that we have a combination between cognitive understanding and somatic feeling so that you just get the picture of what are we doing and why are we doing that. The how um, we have seen that and the experience we got and um, now I'll share my screen again. So we have done the waking up the hands and um, I would like to go into the dynamic of the shadows quickly. So when it comes to the dynamic of being in connection with another person and we want to receive and we want to go into um, the exchange of touch or connection and it comes to a verbal agreements, um, they are not really agreements, they are just like um, um, pushovers or different communication skills. Um, what I want to show is this structure that doesn't work so well when it comes to connecting with other people and that's giving orders, cursing, pushing, dictating, hinting, begging, you should statements, any kind of manipulation, you have to statements or you need to statements. And I guess everybody knows how that feels when some other person is putting that on you. I personally just like shut down, I'm not available and I'm not going anywhere close to any engagement. Um, the shadows and the dynamic of the shadows when it comes to consent or no consent and the communication part is that what most people try to avoid when it comes to connection. I try to say that this is a really um, a rich fountain where we can find more about ourselves and other people. And um, so the shadows is a really vital part of the somatic consent engagement system because stuff will come up. And stuff is still coming up for me even. I do that since uh, 10 years professionally. It's absolutely fantastic. But now if you want to know how to find the shadows in another person or in yourself, then there are four fundamental questions. And you don't need to answer them, just like let the question just be here and kind of um, uh, sniff on them or swallow them, kind of get a taste of them. So why don't you ask for what you really want? Why don't you ask for what you want? And there are so many, um, you know, possibilities why we don't ask for what we want and you know best for yourself why don't you ask for what you want. Nothing wrong, nothing to heal, nothing broken or kaput but the question is when you can't ask for what you really want so what is the entire receiving side what is really important for you to get what are you doing instead? And just like have a quick insight without going any deeper now, but just like what are you doing instead if you can't ask for what you want? There are two of the four <laughs> major questions. You know, we just do all kind of stuff. So you're finding deeper, very quick into the shadows, in your own shadows. But you can turn that around to other people. Why does people don't ask what they want and what are they doing instead? So we have just seen that before with this questions here, you know, what doesn't work so well. But now the, the thing is sometimes people can ask for what they want. And when they ask you for what they want, 
why is it difficult for you to say no? If they can literally express their desire, they have access to that. They will respect your limits. But why can't you always say no when other people ask you for what they want? And the second question to that is, what are you doing instead if you can't say no? Uh, you see another big package of shadows ahead. So again, the shadows are not wrong, they are not bad, they are just part of the entire system. And uh, this is what I would like to guide you into, that the entire structure of the somatic consent engagement system will give you an overview when it comes to human engagement. And what we just have done with the hands is one of the major key components that need to be in place to get the four ways of touch or four ways of connection really into your body. So I want to show you the four questions or the four dynamics that are ex existing in every human engagement when it comes to this um, uh, component of the three-minute game. So the three-minute game is a game that got invented to let people find an equal share of engagement. So the first dynamic is in uh, the four ways of touch and connection, I do what I want. So you can put that on yourself. So I do what I want. And of course, that's true for you too. And you do what you want. So the question, I do what I want, is in combination with feeling myself on an object in relationship with another person. If I do what I want, can I feel myself on another person? Can I receive what is really delicious and meaningful to me? And then to the other person, when they do what they want, can they feel themselves when they touch me? Or in this case, when they touch you. Or do they do something to get that response that they want to have to feel good about themselves, that you feel good about what they do? Yeah, so that's the other way. And then I do what you want. So you want me to be in action for your benefit. Or you do what I want. And all four within the limits of the other person or within your limits. So to these four questions, the four ways of touch, there is the structure of the somatic consent engagement system. And the combination of that is very simple. Who is doing the action and who is that action for? So it is either your action and it's for you, or it is your action and it's for them, for the other one. Yeah? It's either or. It's for you or it's for them. Can be for both. I talk about that in a little bit. So, or it is their action and that is for you, or it is their action and is for them. Yeah, again, their action for you or their action for them. Either or. And what it is, is not about what feels good, it's about what the agreement is. So, this four different dynamics, it's either your action or it's their action, is either for you and is either for them that will guide into the structure of when it's your action and it's for you, then you do what you want. Yeah, it's based on your desires. And what that needs is permission. And that's the simple question. Can I touch you? Can I feel you? Can I play with you? Can I do what I want till you say stop or whatever the agreement is that you have? Or it is for you and is it their action and you ask, can you do such and such? And that is not permission, that is an agreement. So, can you give me a back massage? Can you give me a foot massage? Can you tell me that I'm beautiful? Can you bring me a glass of water? Can you um, comb my hair? Can you let me a bath in? Can you cook me a dinner? Yeah. The next one is, it's their action, it's for them. And you need to give other people 
permission if they're going in action for themselves. Yes, you can do that within my limits. So giving permission to somebody else's action, doing what they want for themselves, is the vital component of the nervous system that you can relax in your body to somebody else's action. If you can't give permission, you set your body up for enduring and going along. And that can never be pleasurable. So, or it is your action and is for them. And you say, yes, I can do such and such for you. Yeah. So if you go on autopilot and don't agree to that action, what somebody is requesting from you, then you're probably dropping into a pleaser role or in a, in a role of um, providing something that the other person feels happy, that you feel happy about them feeling happy or they're feeling happy about you feeling happy that you can do something for them. And then you are in the complexity of complicated relationship dynamics. So on this side, when it's for you, it's about what you want and it's about your desires. And on the other side is about what are you willing to and what are your limits? So some of you have heard about the wheel of consent and the wheel of consent is a fantastic model that I really loved where I have been studying with for six years with the founder and I developed that in a different way because I think there is a fundamental part in the wheel of consent missing. So in the wheel of consent, the structure is you either in alignment and agreement with who is doing the action and who is it for, or if there is no agreement and there is no alignment, you are in a shadow. And this is a very black and white dynamic. You either in harmony and in truth, or you're in a shadow. There's nothing in between. So, this is the reason why I have restructured that. And when you look on this um, structure here and you look from above, it's literally like a pyramid. And this pyramid is a, de a developmental structure. So the developmental structure, when you see that from the side, is your base. So what you have a right to and a responsibility for. Feeling yourself when you are in action on an object, your feelings in your body, everything that is meaningful and true to yourself, so your thoughts, your beliefs, and everything that belongs to you, so your domain, so to say. And um, then you have on one side the permission of the structure, so may I feel you, may I do such and such. Or you have on the other side the agreement structure, so can you do such and such. And because it's multidimensional, it's uh, within the offer and the request, when you play that and you just go from the base upwards and you play that a few hundred times with people, then you're ending up through this practicing of the engagement zone up there in the top of this structure in the apex. And the apex is the interpersonal place. And this is when both are in action and it is for both. It is when you come together in a community space where people provide for each other from a place of generosity, where people communicate from a place of love and care. You know, friendship is happening here. Uh, real relationship encounters because a relationship doesn't happen in the four ways of touch. You use the four ways of touch to understand where are you not following up to your desires and not expressing your limits when somebody else is asking for what they want. So the apex is a structure where the communication of an invitation is part of it. And that is what both want. It's interpersonal and you know, the communication of that is, I would like that, would you like that too? So this is where really playing with another is happening. And playing by definition is about fun for all involved and not only for one person and another person is missing out. It's not winning and losing. It is winning for all. And you know it's winning for all when there is a place of love and care where people are connected. 
So this is still a two-dimensional um, two structure, but now we have the request and the offer and that what is literally forming like a structure of a pyramid was I said already, like a de developmental structure where people can um, learn about themselves the more they practice this structure and dynamics. And this is what literally the structure is what what the structure looks like you know it's just like a pyramid from the side this is how this looks and that gives you this structure it's your action for you your action for them or their action for you or their action for them or it is the apex it is the middle place here this where you know you are in play when you know when there is a really community space when there is a field of agreement created beforehand and that in itself has created this structure of the somatic consent engagement system. So I use that in human engagement as a compass. Who is doing the action? Who is it for? Is it the interpersonal place of love and care? Or is there the shadow dynamic going on? And you find that out by asking the right question. You know, talking about seduction and the gray area and, and enduring. Um, so it's a question, you know, when in, in, enduring is um, you, you know, from the shadow dynamic being done to um, kind of giving an unspoken invitation to let people do what they want, that we are not getting harmed. Yeah. So, so, so it's an, it's an, it's an survival mechanism that 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 is, you know, nearly based on oppression, like in, you know, in all isms that we know. So being born into an environment where we don't know that we actually have a right to have choices so that we obey to authorities to let them do what they want and we nearly inviting them to suppress us that we're feeling uh, confirmed in our role as a, as a suppressed being. And this is, you know, this is, this is, this is so invisible and I think this is one of the hardest nuts to crack because the opposite side of this dynamic is this deep desire, this deep longing to be held in somebody else's power from a place of love and care like the child and the mother. But without having this parent connection, when you are with a lover, for example, or with, an, with another person, is this, this um, uh, dynamic of um, mm, maturity that we allow ourselves to fall into somebody else's care because we are protected. Letting go from a place of um, giving ourselves in because we know somebody is there for us. It's a, it's a, it's a very good question actually. Nobody can give you pleasure. You can only experience pleasure and you can be open to pleasure. You can be open to the action that somebody else is doing to you. And it is either within your set of what you would like to receive and you have communicated that or you have not done that and then you probably don't experience any pleasure. You know, we are all so entangled in this dynamic of, of relational 
structure because we are all so conditioned when it comes to touch and proximity connections through our childhood through our upbringing and we are so this is so kind of knotted and and kind of conflated that we as adults don't know anymore what is what and when you just break that apart and you um, look from that perspective that um, what receiving in its core format is this is where you're really opening up that door of receiving and the door of receiving is just on a very binary dynamic very simple is you receive through your own action independent what the other person wants you respect their limits but you are you know it's a healthy selfishness here so that you receive what you want to feel like with the object that's the main thing that's why I'm practicing that so much so in the beginning it's maybe possible that you can do that for just maybe a minute or two or three and when you have kind of enough um, trustworthiness to yourself and that this is okay and you have the permission then you can extend that you can do that five minutes or ten minutes maybe even an hour on one, on one point but to do that to go in action for yourself is the core component for waking up this neurological pathways and there's no other way around than practicing that unfortunately or or maybe fortunately or you receive while somebody's in action for you and they're doing exactly what you want them to do and these two ways of receiving this is in the beginning the two ways to practice with you do what you want and the other person is doing what you want end of story do that for a, a week a month or you know as, as, as much to fill up your cup and learn how it feels when you receive by your own action and somebody else is in action so i've i've done that for so many years with so many people what happens is when you coming to this place that you receive while you're in action or you receive while the other person is in action and you know how to fill up your cup and you're full and you just feel like um you know like overflowing of, of of yourself you will come to that point that you want the other person going in action towards you and receiving from you as a gift you want somebody else to fill you up and you feeling self with safe with because they can feel themselves and they respect your limits this is the most delicious way of being touched that i can find and many people i've been working with to be capable of allowing an experience that somebody else does what they want without you being in control and this is one of the hardest thing to find It's similar to that what Kitty just said before because the um, the border between surrender and having a deep spiritual experience by being touched and enduring and letting stuff happen because we are so used to let other people do what they want and you know we endure because it's easier to go along with something than actually say what we don't like it's so thin that we can't see that sometimes we're ending up in the gray zone without knowing what we where we are and um, and when you become an expert of that you become aware of that gray zone when you become an expert of your own experience and what you do is when you're an expert you either know when you surrender because then you are in absolutely unity with the situation and you just melt 
or you can say stop this is how much i can give this is i'm i'm i'm, I'm not willing to let anything further happen here and that is a you know unfortunately um Well, this is a lifelong process. It, it it won't happen in a week or two or in a month or two months. I do that since 10 years, you know, and I find always new layers to that. And that's the beauty of it. You just learn more about yourself and other people. Yes, it's, it's, it's a great question. I don't know who have done that workshop, um, <laughs> but this is somebody who has probably a different level of embodiment to that that I would highly question. So when you come from the rawness of this dynamics um, of the three minute game, then if you know when when it's about you what you want and what you want to receive, then you have to put yourself first and you have to respect the limits of the other person in this order. If you put the limits of um, yourself first and no, if you put the limit of the other person first and then do what you want or receive what you want, you put yourself second already, then it's not receiving anymore. No. no? Now on the other side, on the other side with where you give and where you're willing to, you have a different dynamic here. There you have the dynamic you put aside what you want in this order and you respect your limits. Yeah. yeah. So respecting your limits is equal with what are you willing to. Yeah. When you turn this order around on the giving side and you put what your limits are and what you're willing to in the first place and then put aside what you want then you're not giving anything. Then you're actually trying to make something possible for the other person without them saying in the first place what they want. So it's literally yeah. upside down. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. So, it, so I just let me rephrase that again. That makes it really simple and easy. When you're on the receiving side, mm -hmm. you have to put yourself first of what you want and you respect the other person's limits in this order. When you're on the giving side, you put aside what you want, because it's about what the other person wants. So you put aside what you want and you respect your own limit in the same order. What I guess what when... And so please forgive me, I don't want to sound judgmental or dis dis consenting, but I am... <laughs> <laughs> I think there's so much so much people out there who haven't really gotten the whole thing. Um because when you when you when you take where it's from from the three minute game. So when you see the three minute game comes from a BDSM practice. Yeah, the BDSM practice is power, intimacy and surrender. So when you see it from that way from from, from that part in BDSM it's not about you do what you want. You actually operate towards another person in a state of surrender. You give your gift of power to somebody else's experience of surrender. It's a complete different setting of dynamics and energetics. So I've been working with many people in the BDSM scene who have said the wheel of consent does not work for me because of that so but when you say that when you see so there's there's one big confusion another big confusion is when people play the three minute game they come from the original form of the three minute game what is an offer when you make an offer and you come from that place you say in the beginning how do you want me to touch you or how do you want to touch me? That needs to be in place first that two people who are asking this question have an agreement that they play a game. 
Yeah. When you go to another person and you say, what do you want me to do to you? Uh, wait a second. I actually have no memory that I wanted you to do anything for me. Because this question includes an assumption. And that creates a confusion. So therefore, I've seen that exactly what you described. I've seen that, that when you come from a place, so what are you willing to give? Um, wait a second, that's not the question. The question is, what does somebody else really want? And then I can respond to that. So you have been in the middle of an oxymoron <laughs> that has just created a confusion. I'm sorry about that. So, so the confusion is before you can ask somebody else the, um, or, or before you can explain to somebody else what are you willing to give, you need to have a formal agreement with the other person that you play a game. Yeah, and the game has four different rounds. I do what I want and so on. So I explain them. When you um, come from that place of the three minute game, you have to know what you want. You have to know what you want to do for yourself and you have to kind of know what you want somebody else is doing for you. In, in, instead of the other person bring into their focus what they want and then they can request that and then you can say okay i'm not willing to do that but maybe i'm willing to this yes yeah, so so what needs to be in place first is the the person who is it for needs to make a statement and a request what they want and then you respond with a limit to this so this, there's a big confusion in the entire field of bodywork, of consent, of tantra. You know, in, I've, I've been in so many environments and it's, you know, there's more confusion than actually liberation. So the three minute game comes from a BDSM practice. Yeah. And BDSM is super hyper transformative if people are in awareness about the dynamic of BDSM. So BDSM, you probably know, is for bondage, uh, dominance, submission, and, uh, and, and masochism. Yeah? So all four different dynamics have a different set of transformation. And you need to be really clear about what they are before you can play there. Yeah? Because it has a lot to do with shadows. And this is what BDSM is for. You can consciously go into a shadow field. You pick one little piece and you just really observe that and you look and then you go into a place of transformation playing with it. And the core dynamic of BDSM is, in my perception, is the, dominant, the, the dominance part. So domination. And domination comes in a pair with submission. So when we think domination is the person who is in power, this is the unhealthy way of domination that the person in power is doing what they want and they don't care about the other person in submission. This is unhealthy masculinity yeah, that exists in all genders. Yeah. So this is the so-called power over dynamic. When you see from the three minute game, how it got created is the person in power is giving their gift of power to the person in a place of surrender from a place of love and care to let the person in surrender have an experience that this person cannot have on themselves. Yeah. And the person in giving the gift of power they are in constant checking in that the person who is surrendering has the experience that this person wants to have in a very healthy way. In an unhealthy way, when the person in dominance is kind of not really embodied, the person in surrender has no access to expressing limits and saying stop. 
then you know then you have an abusive situation and BDSM is full of them of, of abusive situation so Harry Fetters created the three minute game in a safe environment that people in the frame of BDSM have this experience of safety and connection yeah so where people flogging each other they're tying each other up they're having all kind of experiences whatever they choose so Betty Martin was part of that workshop from Harry Fetters and Betty Martin took the four different dynamics and created the wheel of consent out of that but her foundation of the wheel of consent is not based on BDSM her foundation of the wheel of consent is based on the sensory inflow of the somatic experience that we have played in the beginning with the hands and if 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 this is only limited to the two-dimensional structure of the wheel of consent then you only see either it is in alignment or you have the shadows but that what Harry Fetters is talking about you give your gift of power is not happening in the wheel of consent it doesn't exist simply it happens in this apex place in this place of love and care of um, interpersonal connection of play of agreement so take a deep breath exhale all the way out till inhaling just happened by itself take something in your hands tap straight into this tinglish sensual experience of it just feels delicious and nice and stay there for a moment be really gentle and slowly no rush and if your mind still runs that's fine too and just stay there in connection just on one spot where it just feels nice and while you feeling that on your hands just let these words that I'm saying just go through so we have shared a lot of information today some of this information deeply resonated with you some of them maybe doesn't some of them you might haven't understood yet and you might want to revisit them on another day but everything that resonated with you is yours so let that sink in and use it as a foundation to create the experience that you want to have in life we are all not masters we are all on a journey of life and we are all finding our truth and that comes from embodiment and practice so this calls that we do here gives you the opportunity to ask questions and practice hmm. One for sure, there's nothing broken in any of us. Nothing needs to be fixed. And there's always new layers to find. And then when you're ready in your own speed, your own time, um, I invite you to bring your attention back to the screen. And let's check out with your key learning of today. Your key aha. What's your takeaway? Yeah, the philosophical conversation is one piece and the practice, just like practice, practice, practice.
practice more. Yeah, yeah feel feel welcome to join us. You know, there we meet every Monday at this time. If you want to be part of that, please feel free to reach out. And we have once a month a monthly Monday. If this is okay for you, you can just join the monthly Monday. But um, all the other calls there are similar deep, and uh, we just practice. Well, you, you somehow you probably have my email address or my connection somehow. So please feel free to reach out. So when you're on the page, you will find me. If you want to be part of the academy of these calls, you find me, and then you're more than welcome to join. Um, and uh, bring all these experiences into your life. <laughs> this is where they belong to. This is we're just philosophically talking about that. But you need to practice. Life happens when you are with other people. Have a beautiful Monday evening. Enjoy the rest of the week. Wednesday, 7 o'clock, we just uh, do the hands meditation and uh, then uh, see you uh, next time. All right. Thank you and bye.